The neural network was first conceptualized by neuroscientist Warren McCulloch and logician Walter Pitts in 1943. At this point, studies on how the human brain works mathematically have already been going on for ages, but technology wasn't mature enough to take advantage of these findings. Everything changed in 1958 when Frank Rosenblatt, a researcher at Cornell's Aeronautical Laboratory, made the perceptron, which became the basis for modern neural networks. If I had to give a definition to neural networks, I'd say they're mathematical algorithms built to make decisions similar to ones humans would make with arbitrary intuition, like if this picture is a cat or a dog. Many people tend to be intimidated or even confused by neural nets at first. After all, they're capable of making very complex decisions, sometimes rivaling or even surpassing humans, but at their core, they're very sensible. You've probably seen an image like this before. It kind of looks like a Samsung password, but it's actually a neural network, or at least it's visual representation. Those circles are called neurons. You could think of them as functions. They have an input that's sent through something called an activation function, which is a type of function that normalizes the range of its input, and then its output is sent along the neural network. Those lines, which are called channels, each have corresponding numbers called weights that are multiplied with the number being sent along. Each channel has a unique weight. As you'll see later, these weights are the key to a neural network's decision-making process. Each of those columns of neurons represents something called a layer, which is a group of neurons that all receive the same input and their output is sent to the same places. Aside from their unique connecting channels, Channels, neurons in a layer are all exactly the same. Each layer has its own specific name and purpose, first and last always being called the input and output layer respectively, and the middle being a type of layer called a hidden layer. All that may sound weird and abstract at first, but keep in mind this is just a way to visualize numbers. It represents the movement and manipulation of numbers, just like long division or any other algorithm. Neural networks are able to make decisions through a process called forward propagation, where data moves from layer to layer. This journey starts in the input layer, with the input of each of these neurons being one number from a piece of data we want an answer on. Then, in each neuron, the input is passed through the activation function, and its output is sent to every neuron in the next layer through a channel, where a corresponding weight is multiplied with it. Each neuron in the next layer then receives input as the sum of all the outputs it received, plus another value called the bias value, which is essentially just another independent weight. This cycle continues until we get the outputs of our final neurons, which are essentially the outputs of our entire neural network. So that's how forward propagation is expressed through an algorithm. Even though this is basically never done, this structure of neural network can also be expressed as an equation from our combinations of functions unit. I'm not really going to bother they're trying to go through all this because it's so long, but some people are bound to find this easier to understand than the algorithmic approach. As I mentioned before, the weights are basically what make a neural network smart. Since they're multiplied with the output of each neuron, they're essentially what decide how important certain outputs are in certain areas, greatly affecting the output of the neural network. In simple terms, a neural network learns a lot like a human does, through trial, error, and adjustment. These exact processes are called forward propagation, error calculation, and back propagation, where it essentially just makes a prediction based on some data, sees how far it was from the right answer, and makes the weights a bit higher or lower to do better next time. The neural net does this over and over and over again. After all these iterations of trial, error, and adjustment, the weights should be tuned and error should be minimized. As interesting as the learning process of a neural network is, I won't be going too deep into it right now since it's more calculus heavy than the decision making process and tends to make people cry. The full implementation of this that I'll show soon is on my GitHub account with the name Alex D. Macri if you want to see exactly how this happens. Now that you know how a neural network really works, it's time to see one in action. The main purpose of the example neural network I'll show you is to identify number from handwriting. Up until the invention of neural networks, there is no effective way to do this using math, because what makes one thing a two, no matter how easy or hard it is to articulate with numbers, doesn't always make something else a two. It was kind of just up to our intuition as humans. Apple just recently introduced a feature like this last year in iOS 15 called Live Text, so this example definitely does have some real world applications. Technically, with what we know now about neural networks, I could do this all on paper, but it would probably take an entire lifetime just to train it, so I'm going to make my computer do it instead. Okay, so a uh, live demo part. So this first section is just the structure of the neural network and how I defined it. It's basically everything from the last section, but now it's actually articulated with code, which may seem scary just looking at it all like this, but it's actually the exact same as the math in the previous section, just articulated differently. So the most important things to note here are the activation function and forward propagation. So I chose to use the sigmoid activation function, which looks like that, but essentially all you need to know is that it squishes the range from negative infinity to positive infinity to zero to one. And this is what it looks like in the code, essentially the same as the actual math. And then here's forward propagation, which looks really small compared to the math definition from before, and the math definition up here, which is a smaller scale version of what I showed before. Really, it's the same. I just took some shortcuts. One more thing to mention is how I started off the weights and biases. Since the weights I actually find by adjusting them, it actually makes the most sense to start them off randomly. The biases actually start off at zero because even though they're really useful, it's pretty safe to assume that some parts of the neural network don't actually need a bias, so it's easier to start it here and have it go up or down if it needs. This is the part of the code where I load all the data and regularize it so it's between 0 and 1. This is actually a pretty big part of working with neural networks in the real world, but in terms of math class, it's not really important, so I'm just going to skip it. So here's where I actually instantiate the neural network
work and have it learn. And then here I just tested it for fun and I saw that I could actually read handwriting pretty well. So here's probably the most important part of the file. It's a specific example of my built and trained neural network. So first I have a run through and guess what it is, which essentially just runs forward propagation on it and see if it got it right, which it did. And then here I show what it looks like as an image instead of just a bunch of values between zero and one. It does kind of look like a five, but I'm honestly impressed that the computer got it right. And then here I try to tangibly show what actually happened in the neural network to get the answer of five. So first I printed out uh, some values from each layer. So for the first layer, which is the input layer, which is just the raw values of this, I took the first and last values, which are obviously zero since they're completely white. And then I took 10 values from the middle, which are somewhere around here, I think. And then I did the same for the second layer, but you can't really tell where it is on the image anymore because it's not on the image. It's manipulated from numbers there, but it's kind of made new numbers from that. And then I printed out the entire final layer, which is the output of the whole neural network, which is the amount it thinks it's each number. And of course, the largest of these values is the neural network's final answer. So here's an actual diagram of it. These dots represent that there's a bunch more neurons in between, but overall the input layer is size 784, which is because of 20 by 28 image. And the hidden layer is size 20, which is kind of just a decision I made. And of course the output's only 10 because we want an answer on how much it thinks it's each of these 10 digits it could be. I didn't explicitly label the weights and biases, but you have to remember like it's written up here. There's always a unique weight multiplied by each previous neuron for each neuron that's going to, and there's always a unique bias added to it as well. This was specifically just to show how these numbers go from input to output in the layers. And as you can see in the output, which is labeled here, its value for it being a five was still pretty small overall, but in the grand scheme of things, the largest. And that's how it made the decision that this is a five. Of course, there are many ways to expand the relatively basic idea of neural networks, from changing the formulas it uses to the structure of the system itself. A very popular deviation from the classic neural net is the convolutional neural network, which has something called convolutional layers that help provide a better examination of feature-rich data sets, like images, for example. And when talking about the extension neural networks, you can't leave out deep neural networks, which are really just normal neural nets with more hidden layers increasing overall performance. So I hope this all made things a bit more clear. Neural networks are everywhere these days, they're basically taking over our world, but as long as we understand them, there's nothing to be afraid of. Similar to how inventions like electricity and computers revolutionize the way we praise God, neural nets can too if we use them wisely and act as stewards of our world as God attends. At the end of the day, as exciting or boring as it sounds to you, neural networks are just math like usual.